This podcast is brought to you by Cameron Parker and Carlin Parker. Some material is for a mature audience. Sit back and enjoy. I'm like, why y'all coming after me? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. What you gonna tell me? I don't know where you're gonna get it. sweat and tears. I don't know what y'all wanna do about your money. I don't know what to tell you. Hey everybody. Hello peoples. Welcome to episode three of the Parkers Couch Podcast. Uh, hey, we need what, a jingle. What, what, it's time what? for a jingle. If you're out there and you want to make a jingle, give us Parkers. a jingle. Give us something. Oh, let me move my mic back. Give us a jingle. <laughs> we definitely want one. It is Tom. And I'm going ahead to hold up something here. You know, just so y'all see. This week was a week, brother, and it started week to off remember. really great. It's really, it. really, really great. For those of you on YouTube, you see the book I'm holding up, or my brother's holding up right now, Absolutely. and that's going to come into play in a minute. Yes. Um, but this is the Parker's Couch, and if it is your first time joining us, we are two brothers who like to sit and talk about everything from Under politics, the sun. entertainment, sports. Nothing's off limits. You name it. Yes, nothing is definitely off limits. If you have suggestions or something you want us to talk about, you can always feel free to leave a comment. Definitely. Definitely do that. We'll address it. And, you know, we'll let you a little bit into our weeks and how it's going, especially when there are movements. And whew, our brother knows I have had a you week. You have been a chatty <laughs> Kathy. And it's been a week this for week. me. And it's been a week for me. And not a good way. Some ways good. Uh, some ways because it started off great we well, started off great with this right here because yes. we got to see the joy reed the joy and reed yes give her a talk on a book tour mm. and the family yeah. affair i thought it was so wonderful how her family was there to incorporate everything about her the experience as well absolutely oh what it it was so great it was, it was so, a perfect night a perfect night the conversation and then she, even who she had interviewing her. Oh, David Bestlaw, a huge fan. He's the world renowned historian. Like, nerd time for all the nerds <laughs> out there. Yes, I love David Bestlaw. It was so great. It was so great just to um, be there. My brother and our friend John was there, and we got to take a picture with Joy. I made sure I put that picture up. Yeah. So those of you on YouTube are seeing that as well. And my brother dropped in a little line to you, Miss Joy Ann Reed, about our podcast. I did. And Joy wrote it down. She did. And she said, I'm going to check it out. So I hope she watches this episode. <laughs> so, Joy, if you are here, welcome. I'll listen to this episode. Yes. Welcome to the Parker's Couch. And I hope you enjoy. Yes. Welcome, and Joy. And the rest of y'all as You're well. You're always welcome. But Joy set the scene. What was going to be, even though it started off great, it was going to be a rage feel. <laughs> a rage feel week. I had a lot of rage. Oh, can week. we get to my question being asked? Oh, Joy, also. Oh, go please. ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. David Beschlaw asked my question to Joy, and she answered it perfectly, too. And she had a response that I thought it was going to be about how emotional it was to write this book, being that she does have a good relationship with, um, Dr. Murley um, Evers. Mm -hmm. And you were really proud. I was proud. I told David he had great taste. <laughs> he looked at me like I had three heads. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did. He did. He did. But congratulations. Because you, you actually had a question. I didn't. So I can't say nothing. The Hello? girls got picked and he was throwing them cards out too. He was like, he was mm -mm. going through the questions. Just not a good We're question. Not, not a good question. Stop though yours. Did. Were like one or two or three yes. at, at the mats. Yes. That was ass. Your boy. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. But uh, after that great event, the rest of the week kind of. <laughs> it, it took a little nose dive. It took a little, took a little dive, but that was the start us off on a nice Monday of the week. And one of the things beyond the personal, there was the world just seemed to be on fire. The world was crazy all week. Just a lot of things yes. going on. 
And one of the things Joy had posted on her site was dealing um, with DEI, which becomes a bit topic of this week that we're going to get into first. And the first post that I saw from her was from Mayor Randall of Alabama responding to a new bill that was going on in, in there in Alabama. And let me just hmm, let you know that what happened here. So his statement, he says, although I'm the biggest Bama fan, I have no problem organizing black parents and athletes to attend other institutions outside of the state where diversity and inclusion are prioritized. The bill written by Republican Senator Will Barfoot bars college lecturers, lecturers from discussing or teaching topics it deems divisive relating to race, ethnicity, nationality, sex, and religion. It also has a bathroom clause prohibiting transgender individuals from using school bathrooms that don't match their assigned gender at birth. Alabama has 38 public colleges and universities that enroll around 250,000 students, including the University of Alabama and Auburn University. And he goes on, if, the mayor said, if supporting inclusion becomes illegal in this state, you know, he said, well, hell, you might as well stand in front of the school door like Governor Wallace. Pretty much. Uh, remember George Wallace? Whatever. Segregation today, celebration. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever, he definitely opposed black enrollees coming into the school. And that's what it's given. It's given segregation here. And I think that's a fair question, whether or not we should think about as black people are pulling out, pulling back. And I would say even beyond black people, whenever you are represented in whatever the diversity initiative is, you should really consider about pulling back. We're going to some of these schools. Make it hurt. Yeah, I really wish. I, I mean, I don't want to stop any opportunity for any kid, especially like if this this is their only avenue to get out of their impoverished situation or whatever the case is. Right. But Nick Saban's not coaching Alabama anymore. So. Okay. Go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. Please. Yes. I mean, don't give them the satisfaction or the luxury of your talent. Take it somewhere where your whole personhood is going to be appreciated, not just what you do on a football field or a basketball court or a tennis court or whatever your sport is. And I think that's key with hitting the sport, why he brought it up there, too, because that's that's the moneymaker. And that's what they're doing all these things off the backs of black athletes all the time. Absolutely. We're like, hey, no, we, we're not going to talk about your experience. No, that can't be done in the class. Right. None of that stuff. You want to get your rice back? Hit him in the pocketbook. Okay. We'll get them back real quick. Absolutely. And for Alabama not to be undone, Florida is like, hey, we got to, we, we, hold on. Hold on. Hold my beer. Hold my beer. <laughs> because I'm going to one up you right here. So the University of Florida announced on Friday it is eliminating all diversity, equity, and inclusion employee positions. Hear that again. Eliminating all DEI employee positions. So this is this change announced through an email administrative memo. You know, it comes after the Florida Board of Governors labeled expenditures related to DEI programs as prohibited expenditures. So they have to comply with the law. And the Board of Governors defines DEI as any program, campus activity or policy that classifies individuals on the basis of race, color, sex, national origin, gender identity, or sexual orientation, or promotes differential or preferential treatment of individuals based on such classifications. Hmm. Jeez, it's so much I want to say. So it, just, it says that a university may not spend any state or federal funds to promote, support, or maintain programs or campus activities that would violate this new law, if you will, what ruling that they have there in Florida. And then the, uh, good old Governor Ron DeSantis, DeSantis went to um, the Twitter, state, you know, or ETS, if you want to say. Ron DeSantis. 
He says, DEI is toxic and has no place in our public universities. I'm glad that Florida was the first state to eliminate DEI, and I hope more states follow suit. People, don't go to Florida. Do not. (laughs) I'm not spending another dime. As much a part of me will want to go to Florida for the beaches and things like that and enjoy a little vacation, there is no way in God's green earth that I'm spending a dime in Florida. A dime in my time. The Great Tip to Cross from the Native Land Podcast. Check it out if you're not listening. Yes. Once said that Florida is the dick of America. (laughs) And I think she's absolutely right. Ron DeSatan is the, he will go down in history as one of the absolute worst things to ever happen to the state of Florida. Absolutely. One of the worst. The worst. I think he's like, he was like like a history teacher <laughs> or something in a former life. It's pretty ironic that he's going to go down in history as the scumbag of America. Okay. This is just so idiotic that the state of Florida is going to be so really white, boring, and bland. I wouldn't want to go to none of those those campuses. None. Like, fam you. That's the only place I would go. Or what are Bethune Cookman? That's in Florida too. The HBCUs. How is this going to work on an HBCU campus, though? Like, what are they going to deem? Well, not white people allowed, because what's that? De- no, I'm not talking about with the with the well with what can be taught in the classrooms in this ruling. Like, no. and how strict? Like, how are they going to police? This I don't know how to govern the HBCUs because. I, I don't know. You know what's going to happen? It's going to be some plants like they did in Harvard. That's They're coming true. to get her out. People mm-hmm. are going to be planting and coming into these schools and trying to critique and listen to what's going Because it's not hard to go into a classroom. At all. <laughs> all in college. And it, people are going to be trying to get people fired in a lot of ways. And they're going to plant some white kid to go to the school. Uh-huh. Too, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And report. To me, it's just... Oh, gosh, these fake culture wars are now really affecting people's real livelihood. And something like all these employees now are out of work, employed. unemployed. Yes. And they have like, I think it said later on in the article, like up they're giving them 12 weeks, I want to say, or something that they're hoping that they have a time period to apply to other positions that are open in the university currently. And they're going to try to expedite. This, their, I'm sure they're going pri- to prioritize their, um, those individuals. Right. Please. And try to expedite their their resumes or in applications or whatnot. You are, it's, this is just a cesspool, this is the cesspool of, of America. Like the South is, I see a lot of people are promoting, hey, you know, we need to go back to the South. You're like, Let's do the reverse Again, migration. Uh, that reverse I'm migration. Gonna go, I'm never going back to the no South ma'am. to live. No, ma'am. Ever in life. This Done. is beyond ridiculous. Done. Uh, what else is ridiculous is, y'all, I got four letters from the RS. I I looked at them for a while, and I said, I do not want to open You're them. like, I'm not opening this. I already know what it is. I already know what it is. Oh. Damn bad taxes. And it was like covering like four years of taxes that I still owe. You know, it's less than, I say it's less than 10,000. I'm like, why y'all coming after me? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Well, we agree. Donald Trump has issued one thing that we do agree with. What? Abolish the IRS. <laughs> he did. Just get rid of it. <laughs> we agree with that. And, but don't agree with this. Trump taxes. Y'all complain Those about taxes. taxes are and the doing worst. That. Y'all don't understand. Blame it out there. Blame it Biden. But we under Trump's taxes under Trump, until taxes. 2025 still. Bleeding us um, dry. Bleeding dry. And wondering why y'all ain't getting no money right now. Uh, You thought he was for you? You thought he was going to get a billionaire? Okay. Hello? <sighs> so this set, I'm already struggling with. You know, going into this last week of my current position mm-hmm. before my contract is over, thinking about money and have the kid about to go into college and all these things. Here go these taxes. Life is life. I felt like Terrence Howard. If y'all heard the Terrence Howard news where the court. Just, and I agree with Terrence Howard. A thousand percent. <laughs> the court just ordered him to pay 
one million dollars worth of bat taxes. He actually only owned five hundred and seventy-eight thousand. I'm saying only, but between 2010 and 2019, it was like five hundred and seventy-eight thousand. But because of interest and penalties, of but course. There's, like, what is interest on ta- Like, what what is the interest? Why? I don't. I don't Uncle get Sam that. is greedy. So now it's a million dollars, but Terrence Howard, mm-mm, he claimed that it is immoral for the Damn United moral. States government to charge taxes to the to the descendants of slaves. And let Amen, me you, brother. Amen. Amen. I'm I'm right away with Terrence Howard. Yes, yeah, one thousand percent. You know, we need to really do. We need a lawyer to really jump into this argument here and really come up with a way for us to get out of this. Somebody please. got it. Somebody got to do it. Please, somebody got to do it. I don't know what the, I don't know what um the IRS would take from me. I ain't got nothing. What you gonna take? I don't know where you gonna Blood, get it. Sweat and tears. <laughs> I don't know what y'all gonna do about your money. I I don't know what to tell you. <sighs> like y'all gonna put everything else on pause in my life? You gonna put the rent on pause? No. You gonna put the child support on pause? No. <laughs> you gonna put <laughs> all the other bills on pause? You gonna buy my groceries? No, nope, that I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, that's been stressing me the hell out. But you know, it's a brighter day coming. The sun is shining on us literally right now. Yes. So, it's going to be okay. We'll see. Maybe. It's going to be okay. But maybe that brighter day. And then when I see stuff like this, positive news, but then it makes me even angrier what could be done. If y'all heard about um, Albert Einstein College of Medicine in the Bronx, one of the poorest areas there with a school, they were just given $1 billion. Amazing. Pretty much insures tuition forever. For a a very long time. A very very long long time. time. Yes. For the students like going through that school. Is it just for medical students? Yes, it's the medical. Well, it's it's the College of Medicine. Yes. Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Yeah, so just for the medical students. So in which they come out with an average of two hundred thousand dollars worth of debt. Jeez. <laughs> After the school. Isn't that mm. crazy? Just to think about and imagine getting that announcement. Oh, I see why they're doing the Holy Ghost dance. <laughs> they were going, they were they going, were going crazy. crazy. Shit. And they I don't blame shouting. them. Yes. I would have been shouting to what? the rooftops. Oh, they went out a party that night. They said, I don't know if y'all had exams or any papers that were due. Yes. They didn't get done that night. Didn't they? <laughs> they were part of your baby. But this woman, I don't know how to pronounce the right right last name, but Julia is either cock or a couch or it's K-O-C-H. But Ju- is she was the wife of a billionaire. The Coke brothers. It's yeah, Coke. Coke. There yeah. we go. Coke. Julia Coke. And her husband just did a, investments. And they say he, he, he died like years ago, right? Yeah. And it was like with Warren Buffett, mm-hmm. like in some of them early days and stuff. So, you know, they got mad though. And she's old and she was a former professor mm-hmm. there at the school. Didn't want, don't want no name attached to a building, not doing it for anything, like just for the kindness of, kindness her, heart. of her heart. Yes. Maybe, but, See, there are good people. There okay. are ethical billionaires out here. I didn't think they existed. Here's an example. Yeah. A. Did you tell me a stat about billionaires? Was that you that told me? That? Yeah, what was like that? they are hoarding about thirteen trillion dollars of our economy, just sitting in investments and banks and stuff, just collecting interest, not put into society to help make this world a better place. Like, if there are right. more people that had a heart like this lady, we could solve a lot of ills that exist in our communities. Oh, so many. And the Black Billionaires Club, they should be ashamed that we still have a lot of these issues that we have going on in our communities. It makes no sense. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's just a lot of selfishness. It's a lot of selfishness. This money doesn't go anywhere with you whenever you die. Like, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't don't like that. (sighs) So the other thing, I was in a lot of internet arguments this week. Arguing with a bunch of trolls that you don't even know. My brother. That's why I love you. Yo, it's been a week. <laughs> it's been a week. I'm sitting there. I'd be in the middle of applying to a job because there ain't nothing going on at the real job right now. Like, I'm going into They're the They're paying week. you to, to look for jobs. I'm just like, there. Yeah. yeah. And we're on a hiring freeze there anyway. 
Like I worked as a recruiter, by the way. You know, anybody got any recruiters? Anybody got any jobs out there, there for my brother? Yeah. So, and we're on a freeze point. Ain't nothing going on. So I'm, I'm like applying for jobs and, you know, different stuff. But in between, I just happened to go on Instagram and on Hollywood Unlocked. And I saw what was going on in Ghana. Now, if you're not familiar with what happened in Ghana, this that's week, full of nothingness. The parliament passed an anti LGBTQ plus bill that could imprison people for years. So this bill was introduced to parliament three years ago and criminalizes members of the LGBTQ plus community as well as its supporters, including promotion and funding of related event activities and public displays of affection. So this bill it was now sent to the president's desk to be signed into the law where people can be jailed up to like three year, three to five years or more just for simply being who they are. And just think about all the ways that this could be mishandled and done with people. And I could, I I, it's just a lot. I'm going to tell you, tell you what pisses me off the most about this. It's that black people are supporting white Christian because they're extremists. new to this. This is where this come is, from. These white Christian extremists went on a mission yes. to Uganda about a decade ago to spread this hate for the LGBT the know. Q community. This, this is all they're doing. Came and said all these falsehoods and propaganda and I'm sure gave all kinds of monies to the Uganda government and parliament. So just like, hey, well, y'all give me this money. You know, we'll go ahead and support this. Right. And we have people supporting this stuff and like, oh, yeah, this is great. Yeah. Y'all love y'all white daddies. I just don't understand this. It just makes me so sick. So sick. And so I just simply responded under, you know, everybody knows Hollywood lot. Un Hollywood Unlocked, it's led by Jason Lee, CEO, who is a gay man, and all these people like supporting this and congratulating Ganda under this post. I just simply said, people congratulating this under a post from a feed led by a gay man is priceless. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And everybody Honestly. was in their feelings. And I just have <laughs> been arguing, arguing down. Ever since. They like it over here. They like it. With, they like it under Jason Lee's post. They do. They do. They I, like it over there. For the life of me, I just will not ever understand why people care so much about what's happening in somebody else's, in bedroom. Somebody else's bedroom that's not yours. It's just, it's, I would never understand. And then try to do this whole thing, like the idea even behind it, beyond, behind um, Ghana, because they also throw in, when as African people, do you use the language family values? Never. It is white Christian conservatism written all over it. And so part of this bill is like the anti-LGBT and, fa and as family if values. The LGBTQ community, community can't have a family. Right. And so I they're talking about children. this is to protect the children and to protect like abuse, like protect child abuse. Excuse me? Well, if y'all are protect, uh, protecting the child abuse, y'all should get rid of churches and preachers. Excuse me? Yes. Because that's like, where a lot of abuse is coming from. Are people that they know in their home or your crazy uncle or auntie? And the, the thing is, like, abuse, it just lets you know how ignorant you are because abuse has nothing to do with sexuality. No. That's all a whole, that's a whole different. A lot of that's do with proximity, just like yes. everything else in life. And it's about this power and control dynamic and a lot of other, a, a lot of other qualities that are outside of sexual orientation. Exactly. So this is just so stupid. It shows you how dumb and simplistic people's minds are. And how they still think all gay people come from being abused. <laughs> it's just crazy. <laughs> like, I can't believe people are so beyond belief. Like that still. But this is like the first banana. Like they always start with the LGBTQ. And then they're going to start hacking away at everything else. Oh, so talk about it. Don't think they're not coming for you. Because you're going to be on the chopping block soon. Talk about it. That just reminds me. And also 
this week, like with what happened in Tennessee, just to say what you ha- what you're talking about here, how they just had a new measure that critics have been, you know, really opposing and going in on about how now they introduce how you can refuse to perform marriage based on a person's conscious or religious belief. So this version of the law, you know, it doesn't specify under what criteria a person can decide whether to agree or refuse to marry someone. The idea is supposed to be around sexual orientation, but this opens the door for, for everything, everything, religion. Look, I don't think you you color should be mixing. Right now, you know, there's a lot of interracial stuff out here, baby. A lot like, of those churches in the South yeah. believe in interracial mixing. <laughs> OK. Or, oh, you a Muslim? Oh, no, we're not going to have that. Right. We're going to have Muslims married here. But you know what? I love it when the tables are turned. I'm just waiting for somebody's like, I don't believe two white people deserve to be married. Right. I'm just waiting for that. I'm just waiting for that to happen. Uh-huh. See, see, see how y'all going to react. Yes. You're going to lose your mind. Oh, you're, you're gonna Presbyterian go and you're a Catholic? Uh-huh. Oh, no, I no, can't we do can't that. do that. I'm sorry. We can't do that. I can't do that. Let's get my conscience. I can't do it. And this new bill, like Tennessee is becoming one of the most strict places for gay people. If you remember, they tried to introduce the drag bill. Yes. Um, to stop drag and stuff there. But like this bill now, because it used to be how there were like specific religious. If you were a religious priest or whatever the word is, you know, you can decide not to perform. That was a thing. Right. But this opens the door now to include judges county clerks and government officials also so anybody can anybody can why do people why are they so obsessed with controlling people's life <laughs> i just don't understand. understand y'all can have the south i want no parts of it i'm sorry i grew up in the south i've seen enough of it i have zero I desire no desire because these people are crazy and y'all are continue continue not to vote your interest or simply not vote at all so until the community does better, y'all get what y'all get. You get what you, I love that. Yeah, get what you get. You get what you deserve. You're putting these people in office to continue to do the same stuff, then God help you. So these people, they're just so hypocritical, so contradictory, because it just take P. Diddy, for instance, this week, where the producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones, he filed a $30 million civil suit against P. Diddy, a legend. You know, sexual misconduct and a host of other illegal activities. Uh, I mean, it's a 70 page filing. 70? Yes, that was submitted. Ooh. So he's, it goes through things like talking about whenever he was working on the love album with Diddy, staying in multiple cities, saying that Diddy fondled his genitals. This is the new, the new album that came out? Uh, uh, wow. Okay. Saying that he fondled his genitals, he was sexually co- coercing him in various manners. And holding parties where underage girls were in attendance while drugging attendees. He also accused them of brandishing guns, bragging about getting away with shooting people and boasting about his powerful connections in a threatening manner. And in the suit that had everybody talking because of the footnotes, because he talks about ways that Diddy coerced them and he talks about trying to get him to hook up with a rapper. And, we and know, RB singer. And RB singer. And Stevie J. And he uh, loses and he says that Diddy is saying, like, these men have done it before. And in the footnotes, he's clearly talking about Meat Mill and, and Usher. Usher. And so everybody has been going crazy and trying to figure out. I thought y'all don't care about sexuality. You want it out obsessed. of your face. Obsessed. Why are you obsessed? And like, they're digging for us. Are you or aren't you? Did you do it or did you not? Like, why do you care? Why do you care? Are you interested for a particular reason? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what's, what's going on? What's going on? And then Meek is out there now, and this leads to the... He had this one. I'm going to read this one quote that he had in this article where he denies or that he put on X. He has a, a ton of stuff out there, but now you know you got to boost your masculinity after all this stuff. Hyper masculinity is always the answer. So he says, no man or what or what would ever approach me about gay activity and the whole place don't get flipped. Woke up seeing this on every blog like they know I'm coming. LOL. Me, it, okay, girl. Whatever. 
And then he goes on and he's him and academics get into it. He gets into it with Andrew Tate. And it's just you mean all, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And it's just all this stuff about how much he loves, you know, and all that, yeah. you know, if I need to bleep that, I will. <laughs> <laughs> and everything. Kitty so, cat. yes, I'm talking about you don't have to be all this hyper masculine thing, whatever. <sighs> this is what happens. This is why Shannon Sharp unfriended or blocked T.S. Madison. T.S. Madison. And they come from Uncle Shay Shay now. Yes. About, you see that about his TikTok? Uh-huh. The man had three hip surgeries, okay? So that's why he's switching a little bit or whatever y'all say he doing. Leave Uncle Shay Shay alone. so much. And y'all is upset. You what they did to Beat Mill? Somebody from um, his Twitter, yeah. X, and him, him liking, well, allegedly liking gay porn. Yes. Well, a lot of people like gay porn. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay y'all it's okay. okay and just because you follow someone or connect with someone that happens to be gay okay it's okay it's okay like i just <sighs> i ain't got nothing else to say to them people they just irritate me yeah so you, you've had a great week dealing with the a crazies wonderful, a wonderful wonderful week a wonderful week it's been a battle, y'all, but I'm done with it. You want to talk about some sports? Yes, please. All right. Let's talk about some sports. We had two big records that were broken this weekend. Yeah. Caitlin Clark, just on Sunday, passed. Today. Yes. Congratulations, Caitlin. <laughs> passed Pete Maravich uh, for the most points in the NCAA, which he had 3,667. I believe she scored about 35 points or something today. And mm-hmm. she passed it on a pair of free throws. It was some bogus tech tech call. Yeah. But but, it's going to happen either way. Yeah, it's going to happen either yeah. way. But she did it. She did a thing. And we also had LeBron, excuse me, LeBron James, who hit 40,000 points. That's so crazy. Unbelievable. First player to do that. You know, he's already passed Kareem yes. last year. But now 40,000. In the books, only player in the NBA to do that in the regular season. It's amazing. That is amazing. It makes no sense. I mean, that's something he doesn't even do best to score the, the basketball. Right. But, you know, people are weird about this because with the advent of the three pointer, but, you know, he's not like a prolific three point shooter, but he's he has not a ton of, of shots that three point baskets to add to those points. Yes. They just say that with Caitlin, like during the era. Yeah, you know there weren't oh, three so point. Would have had yes, 5, he would have had if, if three pointers counted doing pistol beat. You would not have caught that record. <laughs> and he did it in three years yeah. versus the four. So that's something to note too as well. Apples but apples, yeah, yeah. Are you impressed with one over the other? I think they're both great within their own right. I don't want to be misogynist, but forty thousand points. By LeBron, but something that he doesn't do best. Like to me, Caitlin's a scorer. Like she can pass the ball or whatever, yeah. but she's she, top six in assists. Uh, yeah, she, I mean, she can pass the ball, but she is a scorer. And like that's what she does best. LeBron assists best, re- rebounds, you know, that kind of stuff. The intangibles. The He's kind of like, yeah, and that's more. Or Magic Johnson than, than yeah, Michael Jordan. I agree with that. So to me, for him, to have 40,000 points is crazy. It's ridiculous. It's pretty wild. Yeah. So I would have to maybe slide, slide, slide with LBJ just slightly, but I think what Caitlin's done is amazing. I'm always going to go with what's on the top level. You're doing this against the cream of the crop, top athletes, the 40,000 points. You have played, I think I saw something, it was like 15,000 more minutes than michael jordan or something now crazy it's it was something ridiculous like that like just the way that he has kept his body the longevity the longevity of this is just so impressive the longevity at a high level like yes like, he's still yes like he's relied on like he is yeah if he's not on that oh, team, on the team that's, they're, they're like, i mean they're only in the 10th place right now i believe they well it's the west and right but if he was in there, yeah, they are. If he wasn't there, they would be probably about last. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like, it's just amazing. 
I I would definitely side with LeBron on this. I need y'all to chill on the Caitlyn with the greatest of all time. I understand that. And my that's what, boy. What's, <laughs> that's what's trending out there. We don't uh, understand that. I'm just saying. Yeah, like y'all is y'all so happy to see this happen. That's all we gotta say. We got we got even <laughs> there. The cornfields <laughs> love it. It's like to me that it's so much more incorporated in greatness. And like we talked about, I think it was on our last pod, last podcast, that level of greatness is, is tiered. And there's some things that are not accomplished. Not accomplished and won't, don't have the opportunity to be accomplished. At this point. Yeah. Yeah. So just uh, she's so great. Not, she's great. No, I'm not going to hurt, bro. I'm just saying greatest of all time. We, we can't mm, go ain't no goat greatest. status. Not no. Okay. It is more than scoring Maybe points. Maybe greatest all time when it comes to. I'm just gonna leave it leave there. It there. <laughs> yeah. I'm rocking with you, so I'm definitely um, more impressed for LeBron. We might bring back some rage. Let's see if you are enraged by this. Colin Cowherd had a list of his top twelve quarterbacks, so we're gonna go and descend in order here. We're gonna start with twelve. And work our way down to number one. Oh. At number 12, he had Dak Prescott. Number 11, he had CJ Stroud. Okay. Number 10, Aaron Rodgers. Current Aaron Rodgers? Current Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> number nine, Kyler Murray. Who? Okay. Kyler. Murray. Now, you if you watch Colin, you know he he loved him some Colin Murray. Colin Murray. Number eight, Jared Goff. Number seven, Trevor Lawrence. Sunshine. Sunshine. Number six, Justin Herbert. You know how I feel. Everybody, you know how I feel about I that. Love Justin Herbert. Number five, Matthew Stafford. Number four, Lamar Jackson. MVP. Number three, Joe Burrow. He loves Joe Burrow. He does. He does. Even though he did note his injuries concern him, but not enough to not put him number three. Apparently not enough, right. Number two, Josh Allen. And number one, Patrick Mahomes. <sighs> there are, a, you know, at least one notable person Wait, hello? not present. Yes. Mr. Jalen Hurts. Where is Jalen? <laughs> Nowhere to be found. They're on that list. Uh, Let's just say this list is flawed and has some inaccuracies, in my opinion. And I brought with Colin a lot, but what Colin was wrong. Where <laughs> Colin was wrong. That's list. And he has some thoughts here at the end where he says, there's two guys in the league that I think I see a remarkably high ceiling. But I don't know Jalen Hurts and Jordan Love. Three years of Hurts as a starter. Eh, great. Eh, he great. Or was it? Mm, I don't know. I think he's good, but we may have just seen great coach. A great coach. A perfect fit for Jalen. They love putting it on the coach, what's, whatever what, is what's a certain. What's wrong with a great fit? Like, I'm, isn't that the name of the game? Isn't that the knock for Justin Fields? Because they haven't put him in a great situation? Right. I mean, I don't understand that. That makes no sense. It makes no sense. Why is Justin, why is Herbert there? Why is he there that high? Why is he a top six? What has he won? They are so in love with Justin Herbert. Don't understand. Listen, and at this point, even if he does something great, I'm not giving him no credit. I'm giving, well, I'll give him some credit because he's on the field doing it. But Harbaugh will be the reason why. Right. Because Harbaugh's going to coach him up. Harbaugh does not lose. He doesn't accept losers. So he's going to, you know, break through that ceiling. Absolutely. But I've seen enough football, enough opportunities for him to come, opportunities for him to come through in the clutch where he did not. I would never, that, that 26, 27 point Play debacle. Ball? Yeah, that's just unforgivable. Mm-mm. Like, Ain't no way. They, top six. Y'all yeah, hold everything against Lamar with the playoffs, but By apparently that, <laughs> that that's it. They're paying Lamar because his playoff record. Right. This guy has never won a playoff game. Bits of never. Once. Okay. Oh, but he's top six. 
without any questions asked. That don't make no sense. And how's Lamar for like a two time MVP? Number I mean, four. I'm sorry. He should be no lower, no lower than two, in my opinion. They love Josh Allen, though. Like, I understand. That was incredible. He's incredible. They he shrunk in the biggest moment. Oh, right. That's not talked about, though. I mean, at least in the Lamar same got way. to an AFC Championship game this year. This guy hasn't been beyond the division. Right? Was it Ryan Clark calling that out that people was getting mad at? Yeah. Somebody, Olofsky and, and Rex Ryan were, like, trying to – Argue him down, and I and I appreciate Ryan Clark for standing two feet down. Yes, and it's like no, I just need to see more. And thank you. If he's gonna be number two, I need to see more. I need to see the results. Jalen's been to a Super Bowl. He went toe to toe, outplayed. Yeah, Mahomes in that Super Bowl. Absolutely. So I said enough for him. Jalen Hurts. The the breakdown last year to me had nothing to do with Jalen Hurts' ability. He was clearly hurt. He was injured yeah, and playing. A.J. Brown was injured and playing. So they were just broken as a team. And their coach went bananas, apparently. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, <laughs> um, that sideline incident was yes. the, yeah. the whole back guy was being suspended. He was unhinged. Like, the coach is the issue on this team, the head coach. I agree. So That's what it seems like from what I've heard, yeah. or what I've seen reported. Yeah, we got some work to do with there, but the other talk is around the potential number one, Caleb Williams. Yeah. There have been reports, and people are reading this a lot of, uh, very differently. Like, of course, it's usual. A lot of people don't pre- choose not to participate in the combine or the throwing and doing all this. But he also said he is not releasing his medical records, is not taking the medical exams and his thought process is all 32 teams can't get me. So I would do the medical evaluations for the team, you know, that he goes to visit whoever he's doing visits with. Yeah. He'll do a medical evaluation then, but he's not. And that's something new that hasn't been done. So it's, it's making some people like a little cause for concern, like why he's doing this. But Caleb gives me like, he's this guy who wants to pay his, on own way, and that's what I like about him. Yeah, he's like, listen, y'all may have done it this way, but I'm not doing this. Yes, and he's he must be what's the thing after my millennial Gen? Oh yeah, yeah, the Gen Z, Gen Z or something. He must be a Gen Z or something. Yeah, I think he would fit in the. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. a Gen Z. They're gonna do it their own way. They do. So I respect that, and I'm glad his father is like 110 percent behind his. Yeah, son. he is. He's like, listen, it's. There's no division here. He's coming in, <laughs> not retired, not having yeah. an agent, not doing all this. It's all like family, and they work into it like it's very much Lamar Jackson, yeah. which I think everybody gave him grief for, but it worked out in the end. What do you think is gonna right exactly? That I was thinking about Lamar. Do you think so? It's it's pretty clear the Bears are getting rid of Justin Fields, and now I wish, I wish we could get. Caleb up here in D.C. That'd I be, know. That would be That's what I'm wondering. Do you think D.C. is going to make a push like to try to I get up to... I don't think they have anything worthy worth to give Chicago Yeah, to, to move up to number one. It would be poetic justice, though, like if he did come to D.C. Oh, really perfect. I'd love to see that happen. Yes. and we're, Oh, then the AFC East will belong to the Skins. Absolutely. Next year. <laughs> they Absolutely. will win next year. Absolutely. I don't believe that. But it's going to be a hot, like, little off market here with Justin Fields, Kirk Cousins. Oh, sorry. I should say Commanders. I apologize. Oh, yeah. Comments. Sorry. With Justin Fields, Kirk Cousins, and Denver. Wilson? Yes. Russell Wilson. All this kind of going around out there. Who might? I was, I was seeing this week that Atlanta is no longer because it used to be like, oh, Justin's a top choice for Atlanta, but now they're saying Kirk Cousins. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, I, I missed that. Yeah, like Kirk I Cousins so has become... going to Atlanta. Now, it's so poetic for him to go right, to Atlanta. But now, like, Kirk Cousins seems to be taking the lead in that. And, like, Kirk Cousins is such a hot commodity now, like, for all these teams. Like, everybody kind of wants Kirk Cousins. Shit, so, like, why so, would you get somebody? Get I, don't, yeah. I don't understand. I don't get it. And I, I like seeing all the support for Justin that was kind of coming out this week. Well, bring Justin to Washington. I, 
I would do that. And people is and where the question was asked, like, what would you give up for him? And it's only one team. I don't know who it was, you know, it wasn't like let out who was saying what, but only one person said they're willing to do something in the first round. Everybody was like second and third. Well, I heard second and third. That's the uh, round would be probably the asking price. Well, the price that they sell it on. I think Russell, Russell, maybe going to Pittsburgh. Is- that's the talk. That's the what I've I think been here about that. I think that's an amazing yeah, fit. Went to Pittsburgh. Yeah, watch out for the Steelers. I think that's an amazing fit. Yeah, if that happened, we'll see. It's going to be an interesting. Well, the, time the combine here coming was up. This week, so it was. Time is ticking. It is. It's ticking. But the draft it is ticking. Like April, early no, don't don't know. Them. Yeah, it's coming, coming up. It's coming up. Yeah, it definitely is coming up. These. Uh, uh, who also, is that? Did, did you hear about Harrison? They're talking trash about him. I did, but not interviewing. Yes. You believe these kids alone? And because they see that, what happens to the interview. They, they and that what out and spit you out and have these falsehoods come out with yeah. the you. Talk yeah. about your family. Y'all see what CJ Stroud is doing right now. But he, said he couldn't read and write. Is that like he was dumb? Yes. I wouldn't want to do any of these interviews either. How people are going to interpret this. Not whenever these old fogies are still back there doing this. Thank you. Mm-mm. When they start looking like us in the background. Things maybe I will maybe I'll do it, but we know like how judgmental. And you become. know, Bill, everybody loved Bill Polian. He was like Lamar Jackson's a running back or wide receiver. Yeah, and now he's won two MVP. Okay, like these old farts need to go somewhere and sit down. Yeah. Who else was talking about? I know you was talking about people with Caleb saying he's a fourth round. Yeah, I think this is just a scrub. <laughs> like somebody's a hater. He the, this person claims to be a, a former scout. I'm like, yeah, I can see why you're a former scout. Yeah. He has a nerve to say, yeah, I've, I've watched all of Caleb's tape, tape, and I've seen how he's interacted with coaches. And what does what that mean? Combine. And I'm sorry, but he's nothing greater than a fourth round pick. Whatever. Right. These people are ridiculous. And, and I think it was Merrill. Was it Merrill? Or Merrill Hodge. Merrill Hodge talking about. He took the saying like, "Oh, Drake May is the number one." Like he's like so out on Caleb and stuff and everything. Man, I'm a Tar Heel yeah, he person and all this, but in, in no. Pittsburgh. So what is he talking about? What is, no, Drake May. I mean, I respect you. I like you, but number one, no, no. Not I'm sorry, Drake May was a, really inconsistent. Very. This we, last he was we, very we inconsistent. He was very inconsistent. He was very inconsistent. He was very inconsistent. Yeah, yeah, definitely was. I think he he has potential, but no. And I think he'd probably go, maybe New England. Maybe they'll draft him in Atlanta. Yeah. I can see that. Hmm. Since then, I go with Justin, which I don't understand. <laughs> All right. Well, you got anything sports wise again? Well, I think we might be wrapped up on that. I just want to say congratulations to my South Carolina women's basketball team. Mm-hmm. Just finished their undefeated season with a victory over Tennessee. I love Don Staley. Like, yes, that's my shero. Yes, like, if I would play for any coach, it would be Don Staley in the entire. You're like, and you're not yes, that is awesome. Oh, and let's not leave before saying congratulations to our nephew, JP. Your singing night, yes, JP at Eastern Tennessee State University, and he's also now tied. I saw today. But it's 71 blocks in a season. He's tied for the all-time record. My prediction, he's going to break this record. So he's going to break it. He's going to break it. That is amazing, JP. JP. We love you. We love you. So, uh, yes, yes, yes. But um, definitely there. So we have a, a few things to end on here. A little quick segments for you. First, we'll send out, before we get into that, a little quick thoughts and prayers for Mitch McConnell. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Queen. <laughs> oh, that I turtle. So oh, gosh. Up there. I was that sorry. was terrible. And if she mentioned Ronald Reagan one more time in that speech. No. <laughs> obsession? Obsession? Mutt. <laughs> Obsessed. With Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan. <laughs> to the point they got married on Ronald Reagan's birthday. Weird. So strange. So strange. These people love Ronald Reagan. I'll tell you that. I <clears throat> Tips across, you get to mention again. <laughs> you, gotta re- you have to watch 
are listening to Tiffany Crosby. I am. That's my thing this week. I'm, MSNBC. I'm listening to it this week. It stems week. around Ronald Reagan. Really? And Joe Scarpa. And Joe? Yes. Oh, gosh. I'm listening to this this week. Yeah. I'm getting into it's this. So good. All right. All right, we have two ending segments for you that we want to do. The first is what we're going to introduce is our video of the week. All right. And this week is one my brother sent to me. Me? Yes. Wow. One that you sent to me okay. from Miss, and I don't want to mess her name. I think it's Ari Nicole. Who would say it? I know she's from Alabama. i listening to her TikToks. She said Alabama. So y'all probably saw the viral video of a woman complaining about receiving $30 for lunch in her cash out. Oh my God. So if you've not heard this story, she's telling a story about what happened to her today where this guy reached out to her on Instagram and was like, can I send you money basically for, you know, lunch, something, do something nice for you. She was like, sure. She's thinking she's going to get like $100 because, you know, that's how I eat. Apparently, she'll be groceries. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> and he says a $30. Total stranger. Don't, don't know her. Because send her $30 for lunch. And she is poo-pooing that. Like, what am I supposed to do with this? Go to Chick-fil-A? She was like, I like a four-course meal. I like to get an appetizer, a meal, a drink, a dessert whenever I eat. What's wrong with a hate sandwich? <laughs> I, get, I hate sandwich every now and then. And where are you spending a hundred dollar lunches in Alabama? Like I, that ain't the go to that corral. She would go to go to corral and get the, the whole buffet, All right? Like, buffet for two. Like you said, I think she is definitely getting groceries. Oh, she wants groceries. She got a kid at home. Something, something, something is something happening. Going on. Something else is going there. Who would complain about $30 for lunch? Like, how much do y'all spend on lunch? Like, am I? I'm confused. Unless you get Uber Eats and you're getting something at an inflated price, then you have to pay tip the driver, pay for right. the, the taxes. Okay, that may be $30. I'm looking okay. for the cheapest thing I can find uh, at lunch. Yes. Thank you. Oh, Popeyes, you got a deal this week? Oh, you got something? Oh, my oh. My, my Peruvian place. Y'all be having that, that cheap lunch right up there down the nice street. salad. Okay. Yeah, take $30. Yeah. I wish somebody would send me $30. Somebody want to cash uh, out me $30? I'll take it. Take it. <laughs> right. You have a nice lunch if you think. But she's been getting ready for her rights. As she, as she should. should. The Jack Hole of the Day. All right. That's our video of the week. And now we're going to our casting couch. Our new segment. Our new segment. Who? Would we like to cast on our couch if I based on this week? Couch this week? Yes. Yes. You want to start it off? Sure. I'm picking the individual, this individual to be on my casting couch because they did what I finally wanted them to do. They went on the offensive and they read those conservatives for their rights. And that would be the one, the only Hunter. Not the Hunter. one that only. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Hunter. And a special shout out to you for reading Matt Gates. Oh, that face. Quote, Mr. Biden, Hunter Biden from Matt Gates. When you were working with the Ukrainians, were you on drug? Hunter Biden's response. Do you think you should be asking me this question? <laughs> Considering your, your drug <laughs> related offenses? Thank you. Hunter went on offensive <laughs> all the children. <laughs> and the guy who led the freaking investigation didn't even ask Cromer, I think his name, this is his name, didn't even ask him one question before he left the investigation. Didn't ask him didn't one ask question. Him one question. Oh my god. Hunter gosh. read them down for Phil so badly that they left without a weapon. Oh Hunter. Please join our cast and couch. Come on, Hunter. You are allowed. All right. Mine, it might not be as positive. My casting okay. we, we take <laughs> all kinds of people on this casting account. For all my Love is Blind fans, I have caught up this week. I oh, did a goodness. mass catch up and I am up to date and ready for the new ones. And I cannot wait for this reunion. But I need Miss Chelsea, Miss AKA Megan Fox. So that's who she said. People say she looked like. <laughs> Don't look nothing like no Megan Fox. <laughs> I need 
to figure out what is going on in your head. Can you just sit on the couch so I could get in this therapy session? Brother, You, if you watch Love is Blind and the people that watch it know what I'm talking about, Chase Chelsea is that person that would start an argument about anything. I've seen like, Chelsea Chelsea. And what I've seen, I can't agree with you. Oh my gosh, it is driving me crazy. And I can't wait to see if there's going to be two yeses that are said here on their day. I'm going to get married because if I can't even remember his name right now, I don't slip my name, my mind. But if your fiance says yes, he needs his head check. But he's from North Carolina, from oh, some yeah. little town in North Carolina, too. Yeah. Okay, you know, yeah. they were in Charlotte this season. But um, yes. They're giving North Carolina down to the one, some of them that's there. Boy. But Chelsea, oh my gosh, it annoying, just so annoying. Like just picking, 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 picking fights. Your problem is you get to drinking and then you just go out. Like she's the type of person that re- will ruin a relationship before it starts. Like we'll God. find a way just to ruin it. And she gives, we was having this conversation in our, Bravo chat little thing we got with some of our friends. And we we're watching Love is Blind too. And somebody was saying she gives me the type of person that watches watches you as you sleep. I, like that kind I, of psycho. Stalking. And so I said, I'm gonna bring this question up for the podcast. Cause Bree, you said I could use your name. Oh, Bree was like, I watch my husband, I watch my man when he's sleeping. It was like, well, Bree, you crazy too. No. Do you think that's crazy? No. Oh my gosh, my brother is crazy. Oh. Do you watch your, your significant other while they sleep? Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. My brother is a psycho. A psycho. Could you imagine somebody waking up and just say you stare? Actually, that has happened to me. That's, I'm so <laughs> <laughs> I will play it off. I'm like, oh, I'm just waking up too. <laughs> Psycho. Psycho. Completely psycho. It depends how much I care about you. Like, yeah. If I'm in love with you, absolutely, I'm staring. Uh, <sighs> oh, boy. It's so beautiful. Bye. Uh, can't do it. Won't do it. Uh, you need to start walking up on out of this house right now. Okay. Ain't no shame in my game. Y'all heard it here. I'm sorry. I just learned this parka. Is a psycho. I'm a fire sign, baby. <laughs> so is Bree. We fire signs. We love hard. <laughs> well, I hope y'all enjoyed the podcast today. I you, did. I enjoyed it. Make sure you're liking, subscribing, following, sharing, doing all the above, all the above. on all platforms. All right. Check us out on YouTube if you want to see us or just listen to us on all the podcasting platforms. All right, but until next week, y'all have a better week than I did this this previous week. (laughs) It is. It's going to be a beautiful week this week. All right. This has been a Rosie B production. You can follow The Parker's Couch on YouTube and TikTok at The Parker's Couch. You can follow Cameron on Instagram, CDParker03 and Carlin Parker. Carlin 1978 and on Facebook under Cameron Parker and Carlin Parker.